okay uh, for um, Aquila. Now I forgot your first name. <clears throat> I've just had a um, monologue uh, addressing my. Um, well, in Norwegian we have a word called plag, ond, which means um, pestering spirit. And it is used to, to um, uh, label people um, that exasperate us, uh, that ho follow us, that uh, bother us, that harass us. Um, but of, of course it can also be used to um, characterize actual spirit spirits. Uh, I've just uh, watched your uh, recent video and listened to uh, uh, your recent video about monitoring souls and such entities. And I um, found it very inspiring and interesting. In regards to my work, which is uh, God work, I work for God and I have been working for God actively, uh, consciously for um, 19 years now plus some period before that not so so, uh, so consciously. Um, and uh, I um, uh, believe that I work at a um, very high level or that I work with um, very, high, very high level um, communities, spiritual, uh, uh, non-corporal communities. Um, but I don't, but I don't see them. I don't perceive them. But I strongly believe they are there, and I have had that realization mm, increasingly. But I have had, I have had it for all this time and um, um, one uh, premise of my work is that I don't take many initiatives in fact I aim to take no initiatives unless I'm inspired or impulsed to do so and um, the this uh, co consequence the ramifications of of uh, an attitude like that is that I have um, um, some in several areas resource issues limitations things I would really like to have improved um, but which I cannot seem to make better uh, with my own energy and my own person. Um, such as my um, uh, my uh, nutritional uh, situation, 
um, I stopped using money almost 22 years ago, 21 and a half years ago. And that means that um, the food I eat isn't so good. I um, uh, have been, for most of this period, been getting food from, um, um, uh, what do you call them? Um, charity uh, outlets like the Salvation Army, uh, like the Blue Cross, and uh, and uh, similar uh, similar uh, places. Uh, for the last uh, four years, since the beginning of the so-called pandemic, I have been uh, dumpster diving. And um, I've been finding food at my local groceries, outside my local grocery store here in Norway. Um, which is a discount uh, chain with um, lots of canola oil and lots of stuff with preservatives in it and lots of ultra processed foods and um, well I, I try um, I try to pick the food that is the least harmful but there's really no high quality food there uh, to believe, be very frank about it so um, I have um, I have a problem or an issue with low energy and uh, with um, uh, belly fat um, but, um, well, I can live with it. But uh, the thing about it is that there's... I, I can uh, f uh, from, uh, uh, from my understanding of my work, I cannot address this as an issue for me to work with. I can, I can, I, I can identify it, as I have done, for you now. But I cannot there. There are, there are, um, there are limitations to what I can do about it, uh, and that. Uh, has to do with uh, the fact that I work not as an individual but as um, an outlet of a community, the community of, of humanity if you like or or my family or my acquaintances or my uh, uh, surroundings, uh, f geographical surroundings, and you know, people with like mind that I communicate with um, on the internet, in all the ways that I am connected with other human beings. and other beings, animals, plants, or all the nature um, kingdoms 
corporeal and non-corporeal and spirits and everything higher uh, angels and all the communities the sentient communities uh, or living communities that I am part of and or interacting with so as I am as I am working doing work for God that means that I am working also for all of them all of these communities my work is on behalf of all of them whether they realize it or not those who have a high God consciousness realize it obviously but so many of them do not um, so many of them could enhance my living slash working conditions yet don't do so um, and and I am not going to take their responsibility I'm not going to assume their responsibility uh, away from them if if I die um, uh, because something happened that others could have and should have uh, interceded with then so be it um, I, I am not going to um, allow myself to um, compromise uh, with my understanding of what my responsibilities are I work for the collective and I must assume that I have the support of the collective and if the collective isn't doing what it could do which I um, believe they should do I'm not going to do it for them and uh, things may evolve accor uh, according to to that situation um,
distract myself by picking a different filter no, a different effect video effect if I can Uh, apparently I can't while I'm shooting I've been going on for 16 minutes so I see um, I've had, uh, before I came on here I um, had a monologue I mentioned that I addressed all of these monitoring souls or entities these pestering spirits plage on the no plage on the uh, as it's uh, called in Norwegian which is a good word um, every language should have a corresponding word maybe they have and I told them that they were being um, they they were being monitored and I told them they were being monitored by the karma protectors um, the beings entities that um, that um, register karmically significant um, actions or, or um, activities in all beings and I explained to these um, Um, well, some of them obviously are freeloaders um, wanting to um, suck off energy. Others are more malevolent, working in bad faith on their own behalf or on the behalf of others I, 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 I said all this um, to them and I explained how their actions were going to have an impact on them negatively or positively according to whether they are here to help me or whether they are here to be a nuisance and also how this was going to uh, act um, uh, regressively uh, to, uh, towards um, those who sent them if they were part of a collective or if they were working for someone voluntarily involuntarily and how that also would uh, come back to affect those secondary and tertiary and so on parties that were part or partly um, responsible for them being here hanging around me doing their deeds
So, um, um, well, I've learned not to react to negative incidents like uh, what you talked about in the video Aquile Sava yeah Aquile is your first name Sava is your family name um, and I I rarely have these negative uh, encounters or experiences anymore. I had one a um, couple of weeks ago when uh, one of my neighbors an addict woman about my age was inside my apartment when I came home from foraging and she had been stealing very <laughs> trivial stuff like pens and uh, note paper and uh, yeah, uh, just a few very insignificant items, but obviously I, I took her to task because you're that's unacceptable behavior, and I was angry with her in a very measured way, and in a, in a very explaining way. She was. She was. Um, uh, she had been taken. She was on pills. She said, and she, that she appeared to be, and she made a feeble excuse, lied a little, and I. I actually went back, followed, uh, or, or went back to, uh, over to her apartment, and I told her off there, and uh, I said, "This is not good for uh, for neighborly relations. You shouldn't be doing this." And um, I left it at that. I, I mean, I, I was angry, and I. I told them what you did was wrong and you shouldn't do it. So, okay, you're not doing anything to improve our situation, any of us, by doing such, uh, such things. So, yeah, that is how I, I dealt with uh, an emotion that some other people probably would have made much more of, uh, out of, and also uh, have, would have been much more emotionally um, um, unstable about. And, you know, I, when I left her apartment, I, 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 was, I was done with the incident. Um, it's not something that gnawed on me or, yeah. And um, and uh, I have been I have learned for the past nineteen years to really let go of things if they happen. I've had a lot of uh, strong negative uh, energy or powerful negative energy. Uh, come at me 
um, over the years I'm 60 years now and um, some of it has been extremely painful uh, I'm not talking about physical pain encounters, situations, things people have said, energy that I, they have projected at me that I could actually feel sting me like arrows. Uh, but uh, I don't get that, any of that anymore. In fact, um, I'm for the, for a long time. I, I I've, it has been my narrative uh, towards myself, and well, uh, sometimes I've shared it with others, not in any detail, but only cursorily when people once in a while are interested in knowing what it is I do. Um, it is my understanding, or, or I, well, yes, my, my narrative uh, is that I have done most of my work, my personal work, to prepare uh, my body as a vessel for the my next line of work which is going to be um, outward everything for the past 20 years has been inward mostly predominantly mostly um, and it has I, 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 um, I can um, explain the origin of this work I, I uh, uh, part, part of it um, I prayed in in the spring of 2005 I said a prayer and it was addressed to God and to the highest God uh, the highest God that I was able to perceive or conceive of and or, and the, the prayer was that I be uh, readied as his worker, his tool, that I be ready to do God's work as a servant of God or as a co well, I'm, I, I, I never put me at the level of a co-worker, but as um, a representative of God, uh, I, I pray that I be given um, uh, um, a developmental path that would 
make me qualified to assume that full role um, of doing God's God's work uh, in openly in the community or in communities and uh, with um, a particular focus on uh, preparing my body, my energy body and my physical body, my emotional body um, all, all, all levels of my organism uh, to do the work that I was meant to do. Uh, when realizing my highest potential for this incarnation. And I believe that is what I have been receiving. And you will also, I think, understand that when such a prayer has been issued, said out loud or in silent I, I said it out loud there is no need for more prayers because it is an all encompassing prayer and when such a prayer has been issued, there also is no need for me to um, to uh, to, to uh, say out my wishes and requirements because. God knows what my requirements are and obviously also what my wishes are and is going to take care of both. Um, to the extent that he is fit uh, for the purpose of his work and for the training or preparation of his worker, me, And thus, I don't tell anybody what I would want. In fact, I don't want anything. I have desires, but I don't... Um, I don't make them into wants. I don't make them into wishes.
and that goes also for people that I am attracted to. I would never, I would never um, um, think that I want this person to be my friend or to uh, become acquainted with me. I will um, I will acknowledge my interest, my my attention, that my attention has been piqued, but I will leave it at that and go on. So obviously, <laughs> from being acquainted with me over a period of 60 years, God and his his um, lieutenants and subordinates in which are hierarchically above me and in line between me and and him they will be fully aware of where my desires are and similarly in food in experiences and um, there's no need for me to to uh, spend any <laughs> any energy on on um, manifesting in my mind towards achieving any of it. It will come to me if it is meant to come to me. And um, I will wait for however long I am expected to wait for anything really good to achieve, to arrive. Uh, at my doorstep and maybe even enter into my space and maybe even <laughs> maybe even my desires in some areas will change So that I will never experience having my desires in one particular area sated because when time for fulfillment arrives <laughs> my desire is something else and I assume I will receive that because I, I do assume that at some point in this process I am going to have my uh, desires fulfilled. Some of them at various times. Um, I 
I do not subscribe to the Buddhist notion of extinguishing uh, one's desires. I don't think that's a healthy concept at all. Um, I think maybe desires have something intrinsically and integratedly to do with the physical body. A desire, at least many of the desires, yes, many of the desires, not all, uh, have something to do with the physical body and sensations that arise in the physical body from encountering the objects of desire and uh, being immersed uh, in an environment where those objects of desire are available and uh, forthcoming. Um, my work I've been expecting my work to um, my inner work to be concluded about the same time that the global spigot energy spigot is removed or dissolved you know with the uh, the white hats and the black hats situation in the freedom or patriot movement in those communities in their narratives when the British thrown as a front for the Venetian uh, banking families or and all of that history and um, the usurpation of humanity however long far back that goes and to however large extent um, that happens to be when that goes away And maybe there's some truth uh, to the narrative espoused by Elena Denan and people like Dan Winter that some positive and and benevolent alien um, forces have now driven out the Dracos and yeah all of that narrative maybe there's something to it and Maybe all of this is now, it's very soon coming to a head 
maybe in 2025 and I've been saying 2025 for a great number of years in fact for about 20 years because I read that year in I believe a book by um, a theosophical book uh, maybe it was Alice Bailey yeah so whereas everyone was focused on 2012 and 2012 came and went and nothing happened and uh, Carl Johan Kallemann completely vanished into thin air um, I was thinking my mind was focused on 2025 so I wasn't so downtrodden with that disaster or with that fiasco um, I was thinking that the um, theosophists probably have higher knowledge of the processes of um, of um, winding up this um, usurping aristocracy and their power structures and that a tipping point uh, um, uh, outwardly visible tipping point an, an, an exoteric uh, tipping point would take place during 2025 maybe that also doesn't hold water and we have to go on further but I mean that won't change anything for me I'm not I'm not emotionally invested in that but that is that is uh, tentatively um, how I perceive um, my the end of or the the winding up also of my personal uh, preparation process of preparing myself for the work that I am going to be doing uh, going forward with humanity and with higher spiritual hierarchies directed by God and uh, anchored in God and aligned with God and that I will have through this process have um, established a connection with God and an alignment with God which is unsurpassed among humanity
meaning that all spiritually inclined persons and milieus, all religious organizations and movements and all spiritual teachers and leaders, all esoteric groupings, whether into magic or Kabbalah or Sufism or Uh, Mahayana, Vajrayana, um, the Roman Catholic Church, uh, the Mithraic, Dionysian, Elysian, Mystery, um, uh, groupings, traditions, they will all find themselves underneath me. as it comes to connection with and closeness to God, which is very significant in a time and cosmic situation when we are all realigning and reconnecting with God exoterically. And and my my spiritual work for the past 20 or so years has been largely focused on the, these um, esoteric communities in their uh, role as players in a power struggle for control over humanity and for being um, loyal, subservient to their conception of the godhood, which for most, in my realization, is not the god that we are going to find ourselves aligning with and and um, nurturing 
our relationships with henceforth but rather uh, usurpers have been substituting themselves for and and uh, and uh, pretending to be representatives of God and have had all of these esoteric communities aligning with them instead on the premise that by doing so they were actually aligning with God they themselves didn't have any responsibility they didn't need to to establish a personal relationship with the highest God that was that was out of their reach they were told so they they could they could instead should instead simply become uh, subjects of these astro theological beings well um, obviously this all goes out the window now very shortly as this whole power usurpation scheme that has been ha holding having a stranglehold on earth on humanity for thousands of years is now unraveling and we are going to deal with the real thing and nothing but the real thing and everything else is going to dissipate or be burned off and because I have um uh, in in my dreams mostly and also in some of my focus uh, in my information work things i have been reading uh, th uh, communities i've been uh, in tenuous or not so tenuous contact with uh, on the internet uh, or in real life these these groupings uh, I have I have gained an understanding of their essence essences um, their um, personalities organizational personalities and their strengths and um, weaknesses and shortcomings and um, as a, uh, and consequently I have uh, reached an understanding uh, and I reached that understanding very early on like 20 years ago from some a series of very intense dreams of uh, involving these esoteric um, groupings Uh, an understanding that it uh, it would be become it would become my task to work with all of these at the same time to integrate all of them to um, 
be uh, there to be God's liaison to them and to connect with their liaisons and establish a community with myself at the center where all of these groups and I also include the more um, more um, I believe I also include more uh, natural um, um, or in natural integrated uh, groups like shamanism and and um, uh, First Nation spirituality traditions. Um, but principally, <laughs> all of these um, these um, manipulating uh, these uh, power players such as the Freemasons and and um, all other groups around the world playing on the same arena. Um, and uh, my um, work would um, would be as a um, an authority as a spiritual authority or arbiter perhaps uh, is a better or equally descriptive term on what is right the right understanding which principles ethical principles outweigh which in which situations um, who is right and who is wrong and do that in such a way that they actually understand not that they submit to my authority that they you know that they simply prostrate themselves and say oh you are God's representative so we are just going to lie down here face down and listen to you give your edicts and then we are going to you know do it but that this will be a a dialogue process a, 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 a um, back and forth and that I will um, that I will um, effect um, interaction between these different groups 
from a, from the uh, point of understanding that they are all positioned in a structure uh, geometrical I think one could rightly say geometrical pattern uh, with each other in different positions and that they will have to resolve their differences so that they could become organic uh, towards each other and and uh, expand their connecting points into um, connecting areas and you know be able to share with each other and increase trust and uh, become collaborators and and uh, move towards you know integrating more and more until we came to a point where they had all integrated fully with one another and with uh, my project and God's project and we all became tools of God and we could go on to or fully assume um, the the um, task of um, fulfilling the purpose of creation winding up creation um, this is uh, explained in a document which I have written called Ontology and Ontogeny or, or, or vice versa or, um, I'm not going to explain that now so obviously with this realization and with me now addressing these tulpas, egregors, these um, monitoring souls these uh, pestering spirits that have attached themselves to me and are are uh, perhaps pummeling me to some extent that this will that this will cause all unwanted and non-beneficial spiritual activity around me and focused on me to um, diminish towards most deceasing for, for the two reasons that either the 
entities that are guilty <laughs> will cease and desist with this new realization of what they're actually involved in and the consequences to themselves. And also for the reason that these other esoteric groupings which are part of my entourage will <laughs> have an interest in keeping the landscape through which I move more ordered and more conducive to the work that is to be done. I'm sitting here right now wondering why am I addressing this to Aquila Sava. Well, it's not like, it's not an invitation really. But it is, well, it, it's kind of an, kind of an invitation, yeah, to to um, be part of this. Um, I wanted to connect with you because I want to uh, acknowledge my appreciation for the very useful insights that you are sharing and um, well if we are supposed to have some relation um, then, well, we'll see. I'm sure um, we could be resources for one another. Uh, potentially, whether we will be in actuality um, remains to be seen. I'm not averse. It's not a desire, but um, I'm hopeful that you will be able to appreciate uh, what I have been um, laying out and maybe you will even go and do some research and uh, maybe you will find uh, some relevance for how you're going to uh, be doing your work in the future. So um, I think I am going to end this recording now.
and I, if this if the audio is acceptable which I'm not at all <laughs> um, confident it will be because I'm using an app a Linux app called cheese which in the past has uh, had uh, very bad audio recording well if it is uh, acceptable I will post this on my YouTube channel as I've done with the um, the two other uh, monologues uh, addressing your work Aquila four years ago so I will say goodbye for now <laughs>